Thanks for having me this morning, and I'm going to talk about a topic that's uh, near and dear to my heart and one that I'm really passionate about. And we got a nice picture of the globe up here. And I always like to talk about changing the world. And I believe people and companies are capable of much more than they think they are. So we're going to start that off today, and we're going to talk about uh, three people. And the first person is Milton Friedman. And he was a big economist in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. He said, basically, the purpose of a business is to make as much money as you possibly can and stay within the rules. And he said, that is the true purpose of a business. Then we got this guy over here, and he's, his name is Adam Smith. He wrote a book called The Wealth of Nations, and he really kind of kicked off modern capitalism. And his view is that you could run a great business if you took care of the customer and if you took care of the community. And if you took care of the customer, the customer would do more business with you. And if you took care of the community, you would build up a great base of business. And that was his philosophy. And then so we got this guy, and this guy's name is Dick Burke. And the big guy happened to be my father. And the big guy didn't start out with a lot of money. One set of grandparents loaned him $5,000, and another set loaned him $5,000. And he kind of started off, and he ended up building up a few good businesses. He really felt that part of his purpose in life was to give back. And unfortunately, my father passed away in 2008. But one of the things I'm really proud of him for is the Milwaukee Journal. In 2018, they named him Philanthropist of the Year. And if you read this, they say that was a really curious choice to pick someone for philanthropist of the year who had been dead for 10 years. But he did so much great work that his legacy continues to live on. So I would suggest to you that the big guy's way of approaching business and the Adam Smith way of approaching business is a lot more fulfilling and it's much more sustainable than the Milton Friedman view where you just focus on profits. Now, I believe as an industry, we've heard about this, that we have incredible tailwinds, and we have had through the pandemic. But that will end, and so we really need to focus on the future. And I believe that if we play our cards right, the future will be even better than it is today. Three megatrends. If you take a look at what's happening, more and more people are moving to cities. It's creating more and more congestion. Roads are clogged. The majority of car trips are less than five miles. If you take a look at what's going on with health, there's an obesity crisis in the US, in the UK, Australia, and we're exporting it to the rest of the world. Governments are trying to figure out how do you deal with providing health care? No one has quite figured out that part of the solution is to have fit people who don't require as much medicine and as much attention than they're currently getting. The bicycle is a simple solution to get people moving, to get them active, to get them fit. And then there's the third mega trend, which is the environment. It's way bigger than anyone thinks today. It'll be way bigger 10 years from today. It's massive. And one of the number one emitters of carbon are cars. Simple solution to cars are bikes. All of us in this room are absolutely blessed to be in an industry that provides a partial solution to three of the biggest challenges that the globe faces today. I want to talk a little bit about Trek. And Trek is far from a perfect company. We have plenty of our own challenges. But one of the things I'm proud of with Trek is that we have followed in my father's footsteps, that every day we try and build a great business. But every day, it's not just about profits. It's also about purpose. And one of the things that we try to do at Trek is we try and make a difference. There's a lot of companies in the audience here today who do a great job and they make a great difference. There are a lot of companies in the audience here today who aspire to do that. All I'm gonna do is share with you 
how Trek looks at the bicycle industry, how Trek looks at advocacy, and what we currently do. And hopefully from that, you can see some things that you can do. It will also spark some ideas on how you can do things that are different and better than what Trek is currently doing. The first way that we support advocacy in getting more people on bikes is just through People for Bikes. It's an organization that we were proud to be there at the beginning. These people do incredible work. Look at what they're doing with sustainability. Look at what they just delivered from Washington. In the transportation bill, $2 billion for bikes. The United States is going to be transformed once again with more safe places to ride your bikes because People for Bikes is there to represent you. We talked a little bit about uh, Places for Bikes. This is a program that Trek sponsors, and we do it through a really innovative way. We tax ourselves a dollar for every helmet that we sell, and we tax our retailers a dollar. So it's $2 for every Bontrager helmet feeds this program to the tune of somewhere around a million dollars a year. We go out and we rate every city, 660 cities in the US. We're rating cities in Europe now. We're gonna take this globally. Beyond rating the cities, we provide information to cities on how you can be a more bicycle-friendly city. We got a lot of educational tools to help people make cities more bicycle-friendly. All right, what else do we do? Um, one of the ones I'm most proud of is our association with NICA. About seven or eight years ago, there's a product manager at Trek. His name's Aaron Mock. He's now in charge of product at Trek. Aaron says to me, would you please come to a Nike race? I think I said to him five times yes before I actually did. He and his wife, Kathy, were really involved in the Wisconsin Nike program. I went to a Nike race. I was absolutely blown away. At that time, at the race I was at, there was like 300 kids. There weren't just 300 kids. What really hit me is that there were 300 families. So this is amazing. And so Trek got behind NICA. And we said to ourselves, how can we support NICA? And once again, we put the tax game in play. We taxed ourselves $10 a full suspension bike. We taxed ourselves a dollar for every mountain bike tire. We asked our retailers to match that. 90% of Trek retailers match that. All that money goes to NICA. If you're a new league, you get $50,000 to help get going. This is Genesis. One of the things we like to do with NICA, and this came through with the George Floyd tragedy, is how does Trek do a better job making cycling available to people for color? We worked with NICA. We founded Pathfinder scholarships. There's 250 kids like Genesis who got mountain bikes, mountain bike gear, stipends to go to races. This was the first year of this program. In Genesis's first race, she finished on the podium. Okay, the Wisconsin Bike Fed. I say, well, who cares about the Wisconsin Bike Fed? Well, not very many people. That was the problem. And you take a look at a state like Wisconsin. Wisconsin was famous for great cycling until it wasn't until a whole bunch of other people are passing Wisconsin by, and I'm sitting there with Bob Burns, who's now in charge of advocacy at Trek. We're like, this thing's a mess. We need to help out here. So we got involved with the Bike Fed. We helped them transform the organization. Bob stepped in as the chairperson of the Bike Fed, spent three years doing that. Trek helped the Bike Fed get going. The amount of progress that's been made in the last three years in the state of Wisconsin is 50x what it had been in the previous three years. All because a company who is in the bike business decided to care about the local market and do something. That's an opportunity that every single person has in this room. You can do so much more than you think you can do and really adopting an organization in your area you can make a big difference. And this is World Bicycle Relief. 
which provides bicycles to people in Africa and other undeveloped areas in the world with a bicycle. And Trek had kind of supported World Bicycle Relief for years. And I think we were kind of a check the box supporter. Like, okay, fine, we'll help you out, go away. Then we started thinking about it. We're like, you know, we can make a bigger difference. We have a lot of people coming to our website. We have a lot of raving Trek fans out there. There's a lot of cyclists who want to make a difference. What can we do? And so we said, we're going to team up with SRAM and we're going to promote World Bicycle Relief. And they were thrilled. And he said, yep, we're going to make a big deal about it through the holidays. We're going to run a campaign. We're going to do all this stuff. They're like, okay, that sounds good. They're like, um, how much money do you think you're going to you're going to raise. And I always think big, and I said, we're going to raise a million dollars. They're like, you're not going to raise a million dollars. And I said to FK, I go, FK, I really think we're going to raise a million dollars. We're going to get the U.S. involved in this. We're going to get Europe. We're going to get APAC. We'll raise a million dollars. And we raised $1.8 million. Okay, and this, this is a great program. And so then you ask yourself, well, how much money are we going to raise next year? And my answer is more. Um, that was our first year. We took one swing at the plate. When we come back for the second year, we'll do a better job. When the George Floyd tragedy happened, um, I got everybody, there were these people saying, we're going to give all this money and we're going to do this and that and send out a note of encouragement. I got everybody in my office, and I love whiteboards. And I go, we're only going to do something if it's meaningful. And so we put down, I think we got to a list of 43 different ways that Trek could do a better job um, of taking our resources and providing a better future for people who haven't had a future, who haven't gotten a good break in life. And what could we do for people of color? And so we put together an all-in program. And part of that Pathfinder scholarship was part of our all-in program. But there's amazing work that's being done here, and if you take a look at it, it's just focus. It's just saying that part of the deal of owning a business is giving back to the community and using your creativity to figure out ways in which you can. So this was a big game changer for me. This happened about, this is before the pandemic, so maybe four years ago, I went to a speaker night at an organization, and they had this guy, Robert Swan. And Robert Swan is the first person to ever walk to the North Pole and walk to the South Pole. And in doing this, he really came to the conclusion that the environmental crisis is real and it's bigger than anyone thinks. And it has transformed himself into an environmentalist. And he had a great quote that night, and he said, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else is going to save it. And I thought about that, and it kind of etched in my mind. And I thought, he is spot on. And I think more uh, people need to come to this conclusion. And it was about six months later, I'm on a bike ride with Rory Kennedy. And Rory had just finished a film called Above and Beyond. And it was a film that was supposed to be about her uncle, the president of the United States, who launched the mission to the moon. And she did research at NASA. and. If you watch the movie, the first quarter of it is about John F. Kennedy and the mission to the moon. And then all of a sudden she found out at NASA, what NASA's really good at is they know more about the Earth than anybody else. And the conclusion that she came away with is the Earth is in grave danger. And this is the chart that's in that movie that just scared the shit out of me. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out where the next few points on the graph will be. And in fact, today I looked it up this morning uh, parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere is not at 400, it's at 419. And that's where we're going as this problem continues to get bigger and bigger. And as Robert Swan said, everybody's looking for someone else to save it. So at Trek, um, if you get a chance, go online, take a look at our sustainability report. We set an objective two years ago to become a sustainability company and inspire other people to do so as well. Everything that we're doing in sustainability, we're sharing with other people, take a look at it. And then this is something we do when, we, when you talk about causes, we put on the Trek 100 every year. Um, we've been doing it for about almost 30 years now. We've raised uh, $19.6 million for childhood cancer. 
The Trek 100 this year is July 30th. It's going to be the biggest and the best Trek 100 ever. It's going to be road biking. It's going to be mountain biking. Um, there's going to be a super cool event the night before at Trek. You're all invited. We would uh, love to have you there. And then there's uh, one more, and this is the Trek Foundation. And what the Trek Foundation is going to do is it's going to take land in areas that are closer to cities that can be accessed by population, large population groups, especially people who can't afford to get out to trails. And it will help people build trails so it will preserve land and it will provide opportunities for people to ride their bikes. There's some super cool projects we're working on. In about a month, we'll dedicate the, in Val Verde, um, in Arizona, there's the John McCain um, bicycle trails. And it's amazing because it's at a public school and that school, almost every kid is on a Title I program where they get a free lunch and they also get free dinners. These are kids who would never ride a bike, let alone have a nice bike to ride on mountain bike trails. Those are a bunch of things that we're doing, but we're working on more. We're always trying to think, how can we do a better job? How can we do more to give back? So if I'm in the audience, I always like to get something out of the speaker. And so I like scorecards. And so I put together just a simple change the world scorecard for everybody here. And there's a few pieces. If we really want to change the world, and if everybody in here um, could do these steps, we would make a significant dent. And the first one is, is just be a member of People for Bikes. Most of you are. Make sure you pay your dues. And the last thing I put down is, how may I help? I think those are really powerful words. We all have things to offer. Uh, the second thing is everybody in the industry would take a leadership role in your local advocacy organization. Adopt an advocacy organization, take them out for a coconut cookie, figure out how you can help them. Uh, the third one is, is NICA. Trek does not have an exclusive on NICA. And if you think you're helping NICA by giving discounts, you're really not because so is everybody else. Contact NICA and find out what you can do for them. And the biggest thing you can do is write a check or you can ask them what you can do. The next thing is figure out how you can get your retailers involved to multiply your efforts. And retailers have a lot going on. They have a ton of stuff going on. The simple programs that we've instituted at Trek, taxing mountain bike tires, taxing full suspension bikes, taxing helmets, matching it with Trek money is a powerful multiplier. The last one I just put down was is that make sure you have a comprehensive plan putting the environment ahead of your company. Because if you don't put the earth ahead of your company, um, at some point in time, none of us are going to have companies. And don't wait for somebody else to do it for you. There's a ton of things that you can do. Um, so I'm going to end with this here. And this is my advice to you. I have this kind of philosophy in life, and that is the more you do for other people without asking anything in return, you get 10 times more back. And I believe that's true with advocacy. The more you do for the great cause that we are all involved in, it'll come back 10 times. You just have to trust it. And it might not come back in a year, or three years, or 10 years, but believe me, it comes back. And then the second thing I think is really important and uh, Steve Jobs, somebody asked Tim Cook, I think it was on the fifth anniversary of Steve Jobs' passing. Somebody asked him, he said, what was the greatest lesson of Steve Jobs' life? And he didn't hesitate, and he goes, that's simple. He said, Steve believed that everybody put themselves in this box, that they thought they were capable of doing this much. And he let all of those people know that they were capable of doing this much. And I really believe that when we come to advocacy, people think they're capable of this, and you're not. It doesn't matter the size of your business. All of us are capable of so much more than we think. And I'll end with my favorite quote here from Margaret Mead, and I used it in a presentation some 20 years ago or more, is never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And so I wish for you the ability to go out there and change the world. If everybody in here works together, you would be 
absolutely amazed at what we can accomplish.